What is up, Postal Besties? It is your girl, Creo Barbie, here alongside with... Mirica. And today we are moving the mail with episode 14. Can you believe it, Miracle? No, I can't believe it. We was just on episode, what, seven? Yes, it's been two months since we've been actually moving the mail here. But I really want to talk about something that Uh I feel like is very important. Um, So for this moving the mail segment, I'm actually going to talk about the hard knock lives of city carriers. Okay. Um, So last week we talked about the 1.3% salary increase Agreed upon with the union's president. And that was some bullshit. Right. So Excuse my French. It was definitely a lot of BS, okay? So, Renfro's for the NLCA 2024 tentative agreement. However, I wanted to actually dig into some more content creators who are letter carriers. As they discuss these conversations and topics throughout the USPS community here on YouTube. Okay. So, not only does our letter carriers dominate in the role they play every day as postal employees, but they definitely are dominating more than any other craft here on YouTube as content creators. Yeah. Well, since things has took a turn for the worst... Of what could have been a historical contract for all yeah. mail carriers across the nation. It actually took an extreme turn for the worse when they settled for the 1.3 percentage of a salary increase. However, since the carriers haven't been quiet about the situation, instead they have been doing a huge service by making those aware of changes and how they can be a part of the change. Right. So the stance they are taking is let your voice be heard. That is highly encouraged amongst this craft within the postal community. Okay. Now, the balance for the tentative agreement comes out on November the 2nd. It allows those under the NALC a chance to exercise their right to rather they agree with the new tentative agreement or not. So... Because of this, I actually do a lot of digging on YouTube when it comes to the USPS community. Okay. I like how it's grown now because when I first started out, there wasn't that many content creators. Right. It was me and a few others out there. Right. So to see everyone that's actually out and showing their journey and giving information i feel like trying to make a change too definitely that's what it's mainly about like helping and making a change being better yes yes i like what they're doing yeah now i will say this before i actually get into the content creator that i want to talk about i actually wish that a lot of clerks would actually become content creators because it seems like there's not that many it's not you know i do feel like it would be a really variety or wide spectrum of people that are actually be able to hear different opinions because they hear my opinion your opinion yeah but i feel like it's so much better to hear multiple views and opinions absolutely and and with clerk craft we do a lot so it's it'd be nice to share and help people that are new coming into the post office and they don't know what to do with their, you know, probationary period, how to deal with the union, how to deal with work on a day to day basis, because we know at hand itself, it is not easy. It's very diverse. Yeah. And like we work in litter automation, but there might be someone who works at the plant, the mm-hmm. station, FSM, ABS, whatever the case may be. Absolutely. So I do feel like that is highly important. I think we should encourage those that are watching now. You guys, go ahead and take a stand and become a part of the USPS community. Take a stand. Yes, you know, this is what we're here for, to actually give information. You never know who you may touch. You never know who you might inspire. You never know who may see this type of videos. So you just never know. If you asked me five years ago if I would have thought that me making a vlog about work would have been actually popular. No. I would have told you no because right. that wasn't the thing that I came on YouTube for actually. Absolutely. But that was the title of the video that blew up and made mm-hmm. me become USPS Vlogs. Period. So, 
There is a content creator, Mailman Saeed. He is a content creator who happens to be a carrier who speaks about why carriers must vote on this tentative agreement. He continues to educate his fellow USPS carriers by making them aware of the importance of looking at the entirety of the agreement to see if it's beneficial for you rather than just looking for a quick raise in your salary increase. Wow. So, wow. Miracle, how do you feel about that statement he made? Because you know what? When we talked about Melman Nikki last week and we also were actually feeling like wow that's a slap in everyone's face yeah but for a carrier to say hey look at the whole entire contract understand it just don't base it based on we're not getting enough money i right. think that raises our antennas to actually dig deep to see what's actually in it because right um I somewhat agree with the statement, but I somewhat don't because I always look for fairness. And I feel like that increase that they got, that that's not even half of what they deserve. But I get what he's saying. You can't really just look at the raise. What does it offer? What is the position offer? What does the craft offer? Um, it's I feel like they get better schedules. I feel like they get more job bids. Like we really don't know. Right, because when there's bad, there's good, or when there's good, there's bad. Absolutely. But I do feel like everyone probably jumped to that portion where they talked about the salary increase yeah. <laughs> and threw it out the window. They're like, where is my money? <laughs> right, because depending on how your life is set up financially, that does play a major role. Yeah. And if you're willing to actually accept it or not. Absolutely. So I get it. I highly get it. And I also understand what Melman Saeed is saying as well. Absolutely. Um, another thing Melman Saeed actually is discussing on his channel is that he actually educate those with past postal battles of prior contracts. So in 1978, there was a contract that went into arbitration in 1978 that resulted in a salary increase. Okay. So, you know, he was basically letting everyone know that, yes, I'm aware that there has been talks about why this tentative agreement should not go into arbitration, because if it were to, then that would not work in the carrier's favor. Absolutely. But he also said that it's for individuals to not just assume that because who knows what will happen absolutely and then he took it further by educating people saying hey this happened in 1978 there was a contract that went to arbitration because individuals were not willing to settle for it because of a same issue salary yeah. increase and honestly this is something to me that seemed seemingly feel like with us not having a contract right now right because we don't know what's gonna happen and how long are we gonna go without a contract i hope this is not a trend that's going on Do you, i'm not gonna lie i am worried because when you mentioned that last week i was like i did not know we didn't even weren't even under contract but see this is a problem with the post office management know a lot of things and they won't tell us we have to find out word of mouth from another employee they do and then nine times out of ten when another employee is giving us information they're not always 100 percent accurate no they're not and that's why it's always good to do your own research absolutely speaking of that there was someone and i'm going to talk about this more in another video but i really want to raise your antennas on this one there was someone who basically was telling me that if you take a hardship loan you cannot take it if you already have two outstanding loans from a tsp loan false absolutely and see now if it was just me going along with that person's word and mm -hmm. not pushing the envelope guess what i would have never known that you can do a hardship exactly i would say this guys though just you know because um my husband's worked for the post office for years so a lot of this stuff i pretty much knew just 
try to stay away from the TSP loans. They're not good. They make you pay them back. If you have to do a hardship, do a hardship because they're gonna. What they're gonna do is, they're gonna take the ten percent of federal taxes off the top, and then whatever you get back, you no longer are required to pay. So if you left the post office tomorrow or a year from today, you don't owe them anything. We talked about it last week mm -hmm. when people do resign. Yeah, how they get a check in the mail saying they owe. They owe now because we are moving the mail miracle and i'm moving the mail in a different tone this week oh okay what we what we moving the mail like we ain't in overtime no more are we so i'm actually still reflecting on our content creators that we have okay because you know like i said i am a silent viewer yeah so there's nothing or no one out here in the usps community i don't know about wow trust me whether i comment or not I am watching. She see you. And I watch for consistency. Mm -hmm. I watch for how they engage. Absolutely. I watch for how long it takes you to respond back to a comment. Absolutely. It, it, I look at that too. It's highly important. Or if you just like a comment and not respond. Yeah. Or if you're answering the questions. That's all important. Especially when it comes to this type of industry that's right when it comes to actually doing this because there's plenty of people out here where they have to have a question that's answered yeah immediately because they may have a orientation next week right or even voice your opinions on what you think about something that we may have discussed because look we may have been there all this time but we're still learning like y'all like we're new to the we didn't even know we were under a contract she found that out by research I had no idea. So, you, I mean, you learn something new every single day. Yeah, there's so much information. And like you said, it's so much to the post office and everything that we're, I'm still obtaining information Absolutely. to this day. Yeah. And that makes it more interesting and, and more free-spirited when you're actually educating others. Absolutely. All right. So, moving to the next person that I wanted to talk about is going to be a content creator who is a carrier as well. And his name is Arsenio Moore. Shout out to Arsenio. All right. So I happen to be watching Arsenio. So something that I actually wanted to kind of bring um, in our conversation is that he has some strong opinions okay. about hood male versus suburban male. Okay. Now, 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 what did he think? He noticed that the lower income areas have a lot more standard mail in the DPS trays, which is we consider junk mail mm. with a lot of advertisement versus the suburban routes that may only have a few um, going to houses. But he said in the hood <laughs> <laughs> that there's always some type of junk mail or advertisements going to every door. Absolutely. In the hood. So, I mean, you live in the suburbs. So, I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. is there a lot of, do you get a lot of <laughs> junk mail? Well, we don't get a lot of junk mail, but we, okay, we got somebody that used to live here prior to us, before us. And I don't know if this man changed his address, but, but his name, seemed like an old man, Gerald, whatever. But we get a lot of his mail in... I don't know why. I maybe I need to put like a little sticker on the mailbox or something. But as far as junk mail, no, we don't get a lot of that. So you don't get a lot of junk mail. It's normally like a bill or something that's important for us that we receive, but not a lot of junk mail. Okay. So he's absolutely right. Because I really had to ask someone like where I live. It's just more so middle class. I wouldn't call it suburban. Yeah. Um. It's just more so like a ranch style house settings yeah so you know i'm not like pulling up to nothing <laughs> spectacular but you know it's just a average of things but i do have humble beginnings okay and in my humble beginnings you know i did notice that when i was younger we had a lot of junk mail yeah we did and we had a drawer 
filled with nothing but junk mail. I remember my dad used to say, oh, just throw the junk mail in the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> or throw it in the trash. Yes. Oh, do you get any of those um, coupons that come like every so many months where you can get discounts on like car wash companies, pizza places, like restaurants, or they give you spa deals, or they I, have like mover uh, coupons where if you need some movers. I used to get those. Yeah, they come like in a blue envelope. But lately, I haven't been seeing yeah, any. Yeah, we haven't gotten them in a while. So I, that's why I was saying he's probably right because we don't get a lot of junk mail anymore. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing with the mail nowadays. But honestly, when it comes to that type of stuff, I hadn't been seeing it how I used to. Right, 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 right. But now I will tell you this, okay? Because you know that I am me. Uh huh. And I am she. <laughs> I like that. I am me and I am she. So with that being said, I did actually drive by Arsenio's channel and I had a question for him. Because him talking about hood mail versus suburban <laughs> mail, it kind of raised my antennas to want to know more. So I asked him this question. I said this, all right? I said, so I have a question. For those starting off with low or lower seniority, are they automatically assigned to hood routes or could they potentially have a suburban route? <laughs> I mean, I felt like it was a legitimate question. Okay, so we just going to say it. <laughs> okay. I think those with low seniority, they get hood routes. So starting at... 12th Street, for example. Well, we're going to even go deeper because downtown is way way before that. But you never know. I mean, okay, let me just say this, y'all. Let me not feed y'all no false information. I'm just joking around. But you really don't know unless you are in that crab. Because I know how when we are clerks, when we have low seniority, we get the crappy We did get treated like hood rats. Yeah. <laughs> so I asked Arsenio this question. And under his video because i wanted to know but did he answer or you haven't got a response yet okay so this is what he actually asked me he said is this for cca or regular carriers and so i, see, I, I don't know nothing about neither one so i responded and said ccas and or carriers who are freshly converted so before he can get back to me there was someone that commented as well, named Nathaniel Hatley, 6406. Shout out to you. I Shout out to you Nathaniel. For actually helping me out with this one as well. So is, he actually said that all depends on what routes are open and up for bid or for hold downs. Oh. So most of the time, though, if you are newly converted regular and they have a route open for bid that no one bids on, and they need to force the lowest ranking regular mm. that isn't assigned to a route on that route. And they tend to use to be the hood routes because <laughs> nobody wants those routes normally. Some offices like mine, though, most of those are routes in the hood. So it all depends on where your office is located. Mm. I mean, that OK, listen, y'all, that's pretty much like clerk craft. Mm -hmm. Because we get the hood bids. If you, listen, I'm going to tell y'all. If you got low seniority, you know I ain't lying. Yeah. You ain't getting Saturday, Sunday, boo boo. You ain't getting Friday, Saturday. I mean, you're going to work your way up the ladder. I'm not saying it's not ever a possibility. Right. But when you just putting your foot in that water puddle, you're going to get whatever it's got, get to get got. That's true. And I mean, that's kind of, that sucks. Yeah, so with lower seniority, you are kind of forced to get in things you don't like. And that's even when we look at the bids, right? And yeah. you see some of this nice, suburban, clean post offices at the stations. Okay, so let me ask y'all. That's Arsenio. Shout out to Arsenio. Arsenio, I want to ask you a question. And when you come on here, please be sure to comment in the comment below, responding back to me. All right. What is your definition of hood mail? <laughs> Does it look different? Because <laughs> I thought all milk looked the same. Because, listen, we, we get routes for Kansas City that we go run sometimes, and I don't see any raggedy mail. Well, it's not necessarily raggedy. What He's, he's just saying the routes. Well, what he's saying is he noticed that the lower income housings, the, the hood, so he call it hood mail, <laughs> 
basically that means they get a lot of advertisements. So he's okay. like, I don't know what y'all doing down there in the hood, brother. They trying to let me tell you something, Arsenio. They trying to get them deals, brother. Yeah, they is struggling. They need every discount. I ain't mad. Listen, even though we live in the suburbs, our sister ain't mad about getting fifty percent off. Give me all the deals. I am a bargain shopper. But I think it's wearing him out because he's taking each advertisement door to door to door. So is it like, okay, Arsenio, one more question. And I, would, I want you to respond to me. Please, please, please. Is it like just one piece of junk mail per home or is it like a few pieces? How does it work? Because I would like to know. Okay, well, Arsenio, if you are watching, be sure to comment in the comment section below because Miracle would like to know more about how does everything work, all right? Whether if you're there getting a little bit of handful of, Or a lot of junk mail, let us know. Yeah. Help us sure, out. For sure. But you guys, I thank you all for watching. This is episode 14, 14 of Move the Mail with Miracle. And Miracle, you know. Um, what you about to say? Y'all see her face. Every time she made that face, you about, what you about to say? I forgot to do something. And I, I do. So I'm not going to shout out um, each and every person like I did the last week episode. Because that will make a lengthy, lengthy episode all right but what i really wanted to do is give a shout out to everyone who actually engaged with the channel throughout the week i want to let y'all know something engagement is really important y'all don't know what we got coming up no engage 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 like 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 share 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 make sure y'all letting us know what y'all think in the comments for sure most definitely um, but however, I want to say, and Miracle may not know this because, uh -oh. you know, she don't check in with y'all like I check in that with y'all. That is a lot. Let me tell you something. See, she make me, she make me cuss. And this is why I be having y'all <laughs> laughing. I be looking, but y'all don't interact enough. Listen, y'all got to do better. Pick them phones up. I don't care if you on it all day. Y'all be on there watching YouTube. Listen, listen, watching TikTok. Y'all can take two minutes and come on there and let us know what y'all think. Okay. See, they don't engage enough for me. That's why I don't look. So we had 1.7 viewers last week, Miracle. Really? Yes. On we what have, video? We have, on the on 13? Um, overall within our whole entire segments for a wow. real week. We have one point seven. pat myself on the back. Yes. That's, oh. One point seven k. So thank you guys for those views on the move mill with miracle. Also, pack the nitty. Shout out to pack the nitty. What's that? How you say that? Pack the nitty. Pack the nitty. Shout out to pack the nitty. Yes, pack the nitty actually wanted me to tell you congratulations on obtaining your oh, bid. Thank you. Thank you. Because you may not know this miracle, but actually. I did record her conversation we had. She didn't tell me, y'all. I had yeah. no idea when we was talking about that bid that I was waiting for for 20 months. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm being extra. <laughs> and I titled it Life as an Unassigned Clerk at the USPS. Yeah, but let me tell y'all something. I don't care what my off days was. A sister was going to work when she can work. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, yeah, more, more so... We need y'all to engage. Make sure that I know y'all following her, but we got a whole nother system going on my side and y'all do not subscribe to oh, my yes, channel. Yes. And I'm trying to go live on YouTube and I know y'all like to see me. So make sure that y'all going over to my page. I will have her tag my YouTube name in her comments so y'all can see it. Um... When you do it, like put like a star or something next to it. Still know that it's for me. Yeah, I'm and gonna, not a regular comment. Well, I'm gonna link you so that way they can just click on your name. And they can get right over to it. Okay. Well, pretty much, go subscribe to my YouTube channel because we post weekly content. Yes. Please, please, please. But I'm gonna go ahead and let her take over. She's getting ready to close it out. I thank y'all. I thank everybody that did engage, commented. Let us know what y'all think. How y'all feel, Arsenio? I'm waiting on you, brother. Because I'm going to shout you out next Wednesday. I ain't going to forget. All right, you guys. So this wraps up episode 14. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like, and guess what? We're out. Bye.